love letter mystery. James found a love letter that his friend Harry has written to his girlfriend. James is a prankster, so he decides to meddle with the letter. He changes all the words in the letter into palindromes. He changes all the words in the letter into palindromes. Now, what is a palindrome? Maybe you know, it doesn't matter, I'll explain. To do this, he follows two rules. He can only reduce the value of a letter by 1. That is, he can change D to C, but he cannot change C to D or D to B. What does that mean? We will see. The letter A may not be reduced any further. I hope you are able to think. So, what he is trying to say is, each reduction in the value of any letter is counted as a single operation. Find the minimum number of operations required to convert a given string into a palindrome and now sometimes these words can confuse the hell out of you. You will be thinking hey, what are they even saying? That is why examples are there. If you look at the examples, scroll a little bit. It is telling the string is CDE. Okay. So, what you have to do is, is CDE a palindrome? No, it is not a palindrome. Because what is a palindrome? You read it from the right, you read it from the left, it will be the same. For example, madam, M-A-D-A-M is a palindrome. Madam from right side, madam from left side is madam only. You read it in English, you read it like Urdu, it is the same only. I hope you are able to think. So, CDE, uh, CDD. Now, what he is doing is, see, E was there. He reduced it by 1, it became D. D was there, he reduced it by 1, it became C. So, what they are trying to say is, any character can be reduced only by 1. You cannot reduce E and directly make it as C. You cannot do that. You can reduce it only by 1. So, E can be made as D. D can further be reduced. So, if D is reduced to C, now C, D, C. See, from right side same, left side same. So, it is a pattern. Now, what you have to tell is, you have to complete a function called as the love mystery. And of course, you have to return to, that is what. So, the number of reductions you made is what you should return. And how many reductions? E to D, D to C. So, two reductions. Now, complete the function love mystery. I will just copy that. The love mystery. Yeah. Um, and uh, the love mystery has the following parameter. So, it has a string yes, which is the text of the letter. Okay, come down. Now, returns uh, the minimum number of operations. Now, what does this mean? Okay, so we will go and try to visualize it. So, watch it. Now, first and foremost, I want to explain what is a palindrome and then we will go ahead. I know all of you already know it, but this is a palindrome. See, M, A, D, A, M. Madam is a palindrome. Read it this way, it is same. Read it this way, it is same. That is a palindrome. Now, you must understand something basic about a palindrome. Let us assume this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Programmatically speaking, if you have to think whether something is a palindrome, what you have to do is, you have to see whether the first character and the last character are they the same. Similarly, is the second character and the second last character the same? Of course, here you have only one character and that one character can be present provided the character on the left and the character on the right are the same. I will be able to think. So, see, this is the same, 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 same and this is possible. Because it is just a single character, it does not have a pair and it is in between a pair. I hope you are able to think. So, palindrome means always first character, last character should be same. Second last character, uh, second character, second last character should be same. Third character, third last character should be same. Fourth character, fourth last character can be same. And somewhere in between you can have an individual character provided it is between a pair.
Now, obviously, ABCD is not a palindrome, guys, because you know, let me put the index and let me give it a value, yes. Now, if you look at it, ABCD is not a palindrome because A is not equal to D, B is not equal to C. How are you able to think? First character, last character, not equal. Second character, second last character, not equal. So, it is not a palindrome. Any confusion till this point of time? So, what to do? What to do? What to do is uh, quite simple. All we have to really do now is we have to go and uh, convert it into a palindrome. Now, you only tell me if I have to convert this into a palindrome, what should I be changing? What should I change if this should become a palindrome? Very simple. All you can do is turn this into A. If you make this as A, then obviously this and this will match. If you make, so, so how many times you have to reduce this? D has to become C, C has to become B, B has to become A. Similarly, reduce this once, it will become B. Then it will become A, B, B, A and obviously it will become a palindrome. So totally, here you will have to do three reductions. Here you will have to do one reduction, totally you would have done four reductions which must be the output of the program and you need not actually reduce it, you just have to find the number of reductions, I hope you are able to think. So what I am going to do is I will keep a count, how many reductions, initially it will be zero. Now I am going to be going and accessing individual characters one by one, one by one I will be accessing. So what I will do is to access the individual characters and store it somewhere, I will create two. Uh, variables. Uh, obviously, this is i and what I am going to do is this is j. Now, i is going to begin from the beginning, j is going to begin from the ending. I repeat, i is going to begin from the starting, j is going to begin from the ending. i will move in the forward direction, j will move in the backward direction. i's duty is, our uh, duty is i and j, we must keep comparing. How we are able to think. That is how we will check it is a palindrome. So, see what I will do is I will create a variable c1 to store the character that i is referring to. I will uh, create a variable called a c2 to store the val value which j is referring to because ultimately it is these two which I need to compare. I hope you are able to think. So, what I am going to do is I am not going to check for equality because I do not want to check whether they are equal or not. If they are unequal only, my program's logic will start because I am talking, I am not checking if they are a palindrome. I am checking if they are not a palindrome, how many reductions I must do. So see, my code is very simple. Before I begin, you must understand one more point. Guys, see, the same string I am writing, A, B, C, D. Now, for you, for you, it is A, B, C, D. But for the computer, it is not going to be A, B, C, D because every character has an ASCII value associated with it. Somewhere you would have learnt. Can someone tell me what is the ASCII value of A? It is an integer value. Here I think in the question they will give us all uh, lower case. As it been given to us, just take to hacker rank. If you notice, uh, in the hacker rank question, if I scroll a little bit on top, they have given constraints down, down. The constraints even more, make it down. All strings are composed of lower case English letters and ASCII of A to Z with no spaces. That is why it is important to read the constraints. He has only told that hey, I will give you only lower case. There is not going to be any spaces and it is going to be ASCII from small a to small z. He has given. Now that I know that this is the kind of input which will be given to me, now I can write my logic. So watch it. Technically for the computer, this small a is 97, small b is 98, small c is 99 d is 100. This is how it looks for the computer friends. That is why you can check whether A is greater than B. 
you can check whether C is less than D. All these operations are possible between characters in Java because when you say A is greater than B, it will check if 97 is greater than 98 and obviously this will be uh, false. Obviously this is going to be false. Similarly, if you tell C is less than Z, it will be 99 less than 100 and obviously this is going to be true. Hope you guys are able to think. Now, having said this, now that you know that what it is is as actually nothing but ASCII values. Now, I am going to go ahead and write some code. Okay, So, watch it. What I will do is, I will take the character at the ith position. I will take the character at the jth position. It's A and D. Now, this is inside C1 and C2. Now, what I will do is, I will have T. What is T if you ask me? T is that temporary character which I want to store because ultimately I should reduce it. I should reduce it, isn't it? Whenever I reduce it, I will get a new character. That new character is what I am storing in T. So, I mean, uh, that uh, number of, uh, it's uh, the count of reductions is what I am storing at T or what is it? Number of reductions, okay. So, now watch it. What I will do is C1 greater than C2. Now, C1 greater than C2, I will check, which is nothing but I is it greater than J. If I is greater than J, then what it means is that what I should be doing is this. Either I should tell uh, T1, so this is A and that is D. Okay, I don't think you are able to see this, uh, but that is okay. This is A is greater than D. If A, is it visible? Yeah, okay. So, you guys are able to see this. I hope you are able to see this. So, so, see what I'm doing is, I'm checking if A is greater than D. Is A greater than D? Is 97 greater than 98, 99, 100? No, it is not. If it is not, what I will do is, so, you know, the, it, that is 97 and that is 100. This is false. If it is false, what I will do is, I will come down and I will tell, hey, listen, T, T, is nothing but the number of reductions I must do in order to convert D to A. That is all it is. I need to convert D to A. Now you may say, sir, why don't you convert A to D? Question says, you can only reduce the value of a character. You cannot increase it. Which means, if I, the character at the ith position is greater, if it is lesser than the character at the jth position, because this condition is false, then I must reduce the d, I must reduce the j character. So, what I will do is, I need to know how many times I should reduce it. So, all I will do is, I will check their ASCII values. And then I will find the difference between their ASCII values. And to avoid negative, see, I am doing C2 minus C1. If it was greater, I would have done C1 minus C2. I hope you are able to think. So, C2 minus C1. C2 minus C1 means I will get 100 minus, uh, that is D minus A, which is nothing but 100 minus uh, 97, which means I will get 3. Now, we know that 3 times reduction must be done to whom? D. Once you must reduce it, make it as E. Second time you must reduce it, make it as C. Then once more you must reduce it, make it as B. I will be able to think. So, you E, C, B and then obviously A. I mean sorry, C, B, A. E is not there. E is after D. Sorry, I forgot English. So, it is C, B, A. Three times you reduce, you will get A. So, that is T value and that is what I will store. Any confusion till here? After which what I have to do is now, similarly, I am now going to tell hey. I do not have to reduce it. I will tell, listen, count value is important for us. So, I will tell, hey, listen, count, initially you were 0. Now, I realized that 3 times reduction must be done. So, whatever is T value that I will add it to count, and hence, become 0 plus 3, count value is going to become 3. So, what did I do? In my first iteration, I compared first character, last character. I understood last character is greater than first character. I understood if it is greater by how much is it greater. So, that many times I should reduce it and that is the number of reductions which I now added to count. How many of you understood the first iteration?
Okay, good. Now listen, listen. Same logic. Now all you have to do is move I forward, same time move J backward. I moves forward, J moves backward. Now you are comparing these two. So what I will do is uh, yes dot character at I, I will take it, store it inside C1. Yes dot character at J, I will take it, store it inside C2. Now I will compare both. Is C1 greater than C2? Is B greater than C? It is not. If it is not greater, then I must find what is the difference between C and B. How many characters difference is there? So because it is 98 and that is 99, obviously it is false. Because it is false, the difference I will calculate by telling C2 minus C1. So C2 minus C1 means it is nothing but C minus B and C is 99, B is 98 and the difference is 1. So we know that this character must be, I'm sorry, this character must be reduced once. Now, I don't have to go and reduce it. Hacker rank is only asking me to keep count of the number of reductions. So, the moment I calculated mu t, my t is going to be 1. I hope you're able to think. And what I will do is increment count. So, I will tell count is equal to old count plus t. Old count was 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 is what? I will store it inside count. That's it. Now, when will you stop? When you will stop is in the next iteration, obviously, I will move forward, J will come backward. In other words, I value will become greater than J. So as long as I value is less than J value, you can keep continuing. How are you able to think? So that is the entire concept. I hope you are able to understand. So let us go and quickly write the code. Wait, one last time I'm asking, how many of you understood the concept and understood the algorithm? Now just imagine, yaar, every day, every day, if you make it a practice of solving just three to four such problems, at the three months from now, imagine where your knowledge levels will be. So the problem is that you guys don't want to do it or maybe you want to do it but didn't know how to do it. Maybe you knew both but you lacked guidance. Maybe you have guidance but you do not have the technical knowledge. Whatever be the case, TAP Academy is here and anyone who joins TAP Academy is guaranteed to become a master at coding because I hope I've shown to you how we teach coding and I do not know whether you've experienced this kind of teaching anywhere else. If you have, beautiful. If not, then you have now. Anyways, let's go there and I'll tell static uh, int is what we must return. Name is some love letter. Okay, next what it should accept is a string. Yes, I think that's the only thing we require. Yeah, now I'll come inside of that and I will create my count. I'll create uh, my uh, char1, char c1, initial value, nothing is okay, nothing okay, empty character, fine. Okay, fine, space, space, I don't think, yeah, fine, all right, character c2. I'm just creating one, you know, empty character or a space like this. I hope you're able to think. Anyways, I'll come down. And there what I will do is I'll write as long as while. As long as what? I is less than J. What you should do is come inside. Where is I and J? You may ask. Okay, we'll create it. I'll just go outside and I'll tell int I equal to 0. Int J equal to 0. Oh, I mean, sorry, I should be 0. Tell me if you really understood. I is starting from the first character. J must start from the last character. What should I tell here? J equal to what? Length is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. So I will tell yes dot length minus 1. Minus 1. Good. Now I will come inside the while loop. See guys, the only difference between for loop and while loop is initialization happens outside. First condition gets checked. 
then body gets executed then incrementation decrementation happens so this foundation is same you know there is initialization condition is being checked incrementation decrementation body is executed it is just that the place where you will put it is different that's all okay now i'll come here and i will now tell uh, i'll start my logic so i want the first character so i'll tell yes dot character present at the ith position that i will store it inside c1 that's why i created c1 so i'll duplicate this line i will make that as c2 i will make this as j so c2 has j then all that is remaining is if in case if in case c1 is greater than c2 c1 is greater than c2 then i will come inside now sir we need t sir where is t you may ask okay let's create t also so i'll go on top and i'll just tell int t equal to 0 initially it will be 0 now listen i'll come here and if c1 is greater than c2 then i must find the difference but should i do c1 minus c2 or c2 minus c1 if you want to avoid negative value always do c1 minus c2 whichever is greater so i'll tell t or the number of reductions is equal to for that character is equal to uh, yeah, T C1 minus C2. Okay, good. Else, else C2 is greater than C1. So, T is equal to C2 minus C1. C2 minus C1. Very good. Now, now this has happened. Okay, now I will come outside. Now, e anyways, either this would have happened or this would have happened. The moment I come to this line, some value of T I would have calculated. Now, that should be updated to count. That's what I'm doing. Count is equal to old count plus t. Plus t. Scroll on top. Yeah. Clear till here. Now I'll come next line. Now the next line, this is this is not a for loop. I has to move forward. J has to move backwards. That you should do. If I should move forward, I plus plus. If J should move backward, j minus minus that's all increment i by 1 decrement j by 1 that's it so see as long as i is less than j come inside fetch the character at the ith position fetch the character at the jth position check which one is greater whichever is greater find the difference in the characters find the difference so we had d we had a we know the difference between d and a is uh, four characters or sorry three characters right three characters we found that is only t value and that should be added that every character we must see whether reduction is required and how much reduction is required so this loop will take care of that once we come out of the while loop all we have to now do is um, basically just go and uh, you know return the value of count that's all we have to do all right so I'll just copy this entire body. We'll just copy paste it in hacker. Let's now go paste the code in hacker rank. Let's first run the code. Some sample test cases, let it pass. Sample test cases have passed. Now I'll go and I'll press submit code. In which case, totally 13 test cases have been passed. Yes, great. So congratulations, 20 points we have got. We are halfway mark we are. 100% tomorrow we will end up with four stars. Provided you guys also do the assign. Without doing the assignment, there is no point. So, see, imagine 475 points on hacker rank you will be able to accumulate with just six days of effort and just two hours per day. So, you can imagine at App Academy, people who take our full stack web development courses, they spend four and a half months with us. 
they learn Java, they learn HTML, they learn CSS, they learn JavaScript, they learn Bootstrap. They of course solve so many such questions on a daily basis. Interview grooming classes are taken and more than anything, 100 plus job or opportunities are guaranteed for every student irrespective of their criteria, irrespective of their percentage, it doesn't matter. And most importantly, two projects are also done, such as building an e-commerce application, such as creating a social media clone. Now, all this is done so that a student can completely understand and easily get placed. And after getting placed, he has such a solid foundation that he can fly in his career. I hope you're able to think. Great guys. So, I hope till here it is clear.